Welcome to Lesson 7a, Dimensional Analysis Introduction. In this lesson, we talk about the seven primary dimensions, we reinforce the concept of dimensional homogeneity, and we define dimensionless parameters and how to analyze them. We'll do some examples along the way. By the way, dimensional analysis is my favorite part of fluid mechanics. I always find it fun to work with dimensionless parameters. There are seven primary dimensions. I'll list them here. Mass, length, time, temperature, electric current, amount of light, and amount of matter. The primary dimension symbols are M, capital L, small t, capital T. Some authors use Greek letter theta, but that looks too much like an angle, so we use capital T. Electric current, capital I, amount of light, C, and amount of matter, N. In this course, we usually use only the first four, but these are called primary dimensions because all other dimensions can be formed by combination of these seven primary dimensions. For example, force. Recall my notation. The curly brackets mean the dimensions of. The dimensions of force are the dimensions of mass times acceleration by Newton's second law. And since the primary dimensions of acceleration are L over T squared, the dimensions of force in terms of primary dimensions are ML over T squared. I note that some authors use force instead of mass as a primary dimension. Also, students are sometimes confused between mass and amount of matter. M is mass and N is moles. Recall that the primary dimensions of molecular weight are mass per mole. For example, units of kilogram per kilomole. So N and M are different primary dimensions. Let's do some other examples of expressing primary dimensions. We discussed shear stress previously. It has units of Newton per meter squared. Let's express the primary dimensions of tau. The dimensions of tau are the dimensions of force per area. Since Newton is force and meter squared is area, we just showed that force has primary dimensions of ml over t squared. Area has primary dimensions of l squared. So the primary dimensions of tau are m over lt squared. For later algebra, it's good to get in the habit of writing it this way. The primary dimensions of tau are m to exponent 1, l to exponent negative 1, and t to exponent negative 2, which is the same as this, but we'll find this easier to manipulate later on. Either of these is acceptable as an answer. Let's do the same thing with some quantity a that has dimensions of force per unit length. The dimensions of a are force per length, which are primary dimensions ml over t squared, and then another L in the denominator. The L's cancel, so the primary dimensions of A are m over t squared, or m to the 1, t to the minus 2. Now let's do power. Power has dimensions of energy per unit time. We know that energy is force times distance. We know that power is energy per time, since it's a rate of energy. So the dimensions of power are the dimensions of force times length over time. Again, force has dimensions ml over t squared. Then we have our L and our T, and we combine the Ls to get ML squared over T cubed, which we can write like that or like this. So either of those is appropriate as our answer. Let's talk about dimensional homogeneity. We stated that all additive terms in an equation must have the same dimensions. For example, our workhorse linear momentum equation for a fixed control volume from a previous lesson, we had sigma f equals sum over the outlets beta m dot v minus the same thing over the sum of the inlets. Let's look at the primary dimensions of each of these terms. Force is ml over t squared. Beta is dimensionless. Mass flow rate is m over t. And velocity has dimensions of length over time. This third term is the same as the second term. And note that sigma doesn't contribute anything to the dimensions. So this is also ml over t squared, as is the third term. So this equation is indeed dimensionally homogeneous. Let's do another quick example, our workhorse equation for angular momentum with the fixed control volume. The scalar version was sigma m equals sum over the outlets r m dot v minus sum over the inlets r m dot v. Moment has dimensions of force times a moment arm, or length, so this is m l squared over t squared. This gives us l, mass per time, and length per time, which is also m l squared over t squared. The third term has the same dimensions as the second term. Again, since these terms all have the same dimensions, this equation is dimensionally homogeneous. If these dimensions were not the same, 
you have an error somewhere. This is what we call a red flag. Another way to express dimensional homogeneity is that you can't add apples and oranges. Now let's talk about dimensionless parameters. We use capital Greek pi as the symbol for a dimensionless parameter. Make sure you don't confuse this pi with lowercase pi. What we mean by a dimensionless parameter is that the dimensions of pi are 1. In other words, it has dimensions of m to the 0, which is 1, l to the 0, t to the 0, capital T to the 0, etc. In other words, all seven primary dimensions have exponents of 0, which means there's no dimensions whatsoever, since each of these terms is 1. So the dimensions of capital pi are 1. Early on in the course, I introduced Mach number, which is speed over the speed of sound. Since it's a speed over a speed, the dimensions of Mach number are 1, or unity. So Mach number is a dimensionless parameter, or a pi. Another useful pi is Reynolds number RE. This is the most important dimensionless parameter in fluid mechanics. We define it as Reynolds number is rho v l over mu, and it's useful for external flow, or suppose you have some object exposed to a flow of speed v in a fluid with density rho and viscosity mu, and l is some characteristic length of that object. Then our Reynolds number is rho v l over mu. Reynolds number is also useful for internal flow. For example, flow in a pipe, where V would be the average speed. The fluid has density rho and viscosity mu, and we can use diameter or radius as the characteristic length. We typically choose diameter, so the Reynolds number is rho V d over mu. Let's verify that Reynolds number is a pi. The dimensions of Reynolds number are the dimensions of density, speed, some characteristic length, and viscosity. By the way, if you don't know the dimensions of some property like viscosity, you can look up some values of viscosity in tables, and knowing the units, you can figure out the dimensions. Here, mass cancels. Three lengths in the bottom cancel three lengths on the top, and the t's cancel, so Reynolds number is indeed a dimensionless parameter. Let's do an example. Suppose we have three variables, a, b, and c, with these dimensions. We need to construct a dimensionless parameter using only these three variables, and we want to have b and c in the denominator. In other words, our pi is a to some unknown exponent divided by b, c. We need to calculate this exponent. What we'll do is force the dimensions of pi to be 1, since it's a dimensionless parameter. Again, that means that the exponents of all the primary dimensions are 0. In this problem, we only have m, l, and t. We don't have temperature or any of the other primary dimensions. We form an equation by applying the dimensions of the pi. a has dimensions of l over t, and that's raised to exponent x. b has dimensions of l cubed over m, so we write l cubed over m to the negative 1, since b is in the denominator. Similarly, c is in the denominator with dimensions of m over t squared l, so we write m over t squared l to the negative 1. Since we don't have temperature or any of the other primary dimensions, we know that m to the 0, l to the 0, t to the 0 must equal the same thing on the right-hand side. Well, let's look at mass first. We have an m in the denominator, but it's raised to minus 1, so that's m to the 1 power. And then we have an m to the minus 1, so we write m to the minus 1, and we can add exponents when they're multiplied like this. So this is m to the 1 minus 1, or m to the 0. So this pi is dimensionless in respect to mass, regardless of the value of x. Now let's consider the lengths. I'm not going to write it out like this, but just do the addition of exponents in our head. We have l to the x from this term, l to the minus 3, and l to the minus 1 raised to another minus 1, which gives us a plus 1. And for t, we have a negative x from this term, and a negative 2 raised to the negative 1, which is a plus 2. We simplify this to l to the x minus 2, and t to the 2 minus x. We have to force the exponents of l to be 0. In other words, x minus 2 has to be 0, so x has to be 2. Similarly, we have to force the exponent of t to be 0, so 2 minus x equals 0, or again, x equal 2. Fortunately, these two give the same answer. If they did not, we'd be in trouble. And either we made an algebra mistake, or we cannot construct the pi as shown here. In our case, we can, since these are consistent, and our pi is a to the x, which is 2, over bc. So this is our final answer for pi, and our answer for x is 2. It's always good to verify your final answer 
by testing the dimensions of the pi. A had dimensions of L over T, and it's squared. B had dimensions of L cubed over M, but it's in the denominator. So we write M over L cubed. And C had dimensions of M over LT squared, but again, it's in the denominator. So we write LT squared over M. The M's cancel. I have two L's and a third L in the numerator, which cancels L cubed in the denominator. And this T squared cancels this T squared. So pi is indeed a dimensionless parameter. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos.